everybody and welcome to the flute practice. So we have been doing this kind of practice challenge with my patrons and we have stumbled on a little problem that I would like to talk and unpack today and that is the problem of double sharps. Many of my patrons have asked what are double sharps, how do we read them, how do we play them, how do we approach these. So today we're going to check this out. <laughs> to understand about double sharps is how they look and I'm going to show you that right over there and to know that we also have double flats and that looks like that. All right now many of you are probably like ah I didn't even know these things existed never mind that I have to be able to play them and how does this all work. I think the kind of key to understanding double sharps and double flats is understanding the function of a sharp and a flat in the first place. Now the way that I like to think about flats and sharps, especially on the piano, or especially in instruments where we're using equal temperament, if that goes over your head, don't worry about it. I want us to understand that they're not so much like actual identities of notes, like they're not like this is F sharp the note, but rather the sharp tells us what to do with that F and the flat tells us what to do with it. It gives us an instruction. So a sharp by like on its own means to raise something by one semitone or a half step and a flat tells us to lower something by a semitone or a half step. So instead of thinking of like F sharp as its own note, I want you to think about F being a note, F is the note and the sharp tells us to raise it by a semitone or half step and the flat tells us to lower it. By the same logic when we apply the double sharp, the double sharp means we raise it by two half steps or two semitones, so basically a whole tone, right? Because two half steps make one whole step, just like in maths. There's so much like correlation between maths and music, it's awesome, I love it. So if we see, for example, C double sharp, like we do up there, which is the one exercise that specifically did come up in the um, technical challenge that we had this week, we got to think, okay, C, and we go two half steps higher than C. So we go C, we've got C sharp is one step higher, and then D is another half step higher. So C double sharp is the same as D. It sounds the same, it is fingered the same. Now, there are those of you that are gonna be like, no, it's not the same, no, there's like gentle nuances and it's different. And yes, that is true. There's a huge, very complicated topic on how every single note's intonation is slightly different in, in like pure intonation, um, depending on which key you're in and 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 and. and not going to get into that this is kind of like a basic you know just how to read them and understand them you see c double sharp and your finger is going to finger d so this is c double sharp and this is also d same thing now the same applies for the flats so for example say we have got a double flat we go from the a we're going to go one half step down to our a flat and then we're going to go another half step down to a double flat, which is the same as G. G fingers. That is a double flat. It's a little bit like mind blowing and a little bit like, ah, really messes with your mind. But if we start to think of it this way, if we start to think these sharps and flats as instructions, whether to move up or down on the note, it really helps. The natural sign, of course, is like the cancelling out sign. It just means bring it back to its natural note. And natural notes are any of the notes on this day that do not have the sharps or the flats in front of it. Those are natural notes. So they're not like terribly difficult, but we do have to get used to reading them and get used to playing them. Now, in my practice video that we did, I suggested that you don't always write you know, if you've got C double sharp, you don't write D above it and think D there. That you start to think in C double sharp, that you start to think in that instruction. Okay, C two uh, semitones higher, rather than kind of like always writing in the note names above it. That being said, if you are starting off and you need to just get yourself used to this and remind yourself, oh, that's actually just the same fingering as a D, you can, of course, write the notes above. But at some point you want to try and erase those pencil markings and just get used to reading double sharps and double flats. Okay now at this point I may lose some of you and if I do lose you I want you just to let it go and I just want you to kind of accept the fact that they are double sharps and they are double flats and how we play them. But the question that comes up 
why? Why don't composers just write D instead of C double sharp? Now, the answer to this lies in the construction of a scale. So if we have a scale, as I'm going to point right over there, so we've got our scale. Okay, each scale has got seven different notes in it. And it has to have seven different notes in it with seven different letter names. So we have, say, for example, we've got here A minor, we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G. If we have a look at G sharp minor, um, I love this example because I feel like it makes it very, very clear. So we've got G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G again. Got the scale. It's related to B major, so we've got all the same notes as B major basically, except in the minors, in the harmonic minors. And if I have lost you here, please don't worry. I'm going to be doing a video all about explaining scales and how they work and relative majors and minors and all of that. We're getting to it, I promise. Don't worry about it too much. Hang in there, maybe it'll become a little clearer. So, got my scale. Now, for the harmonic minor, we have to raise the seventh note of the scale. We know this, right? What is the seventh note of G sharp minor? It is that F, F sharp in this case. So we've already got a sharp there. If we're going to raise it another semitone, we're going to have to raise it to, ta-da, F double sharp. That's quite right. Why can't we say G? Because otherwise we'd have a scale that went G, A, B, C, D, E, G, G. And we can't have that. We have to have that F in there somewhere. So in order to make the scale make sense in terms of naming it and the lettering and having each note, different note in the scale, we call it F double sharp. So this is one of the big reasons. And for this reason, composers will often use double sharps and double flats because it belongs to a certain key signature and they have to stay true to that key signature. They can't kind of just like borrow, you know, notes out of that. I know this is like probably possibly very confusing. It gets really crazy. I think we also really have to understand that every note has multiple spellings and multiple variations of how we can name that note. So any single pick pitch. So for example, A, we've got A. We can call it A, right? We could also though call it G double sharp. We could also call it B double flat. So there are various ways that we could name that A, that we could get to that A. And so we kind of have to think along these lines when we're thinking. It's kind of similar in English, I guess, how we have different words to describe the same thing, right? So, for example, I think I gave the example on my Patreon page of, like, words for love. Uh, we have other words that describe, you know, loving someone or love, you know, adoration or um, affection is another word. They do have slightly different meanings, as so do the double sharps and double flats in different keys, but essentially they're getting at the same thing. Okay guys, that is just a brief overview of how those nasty double sharps and double flats work. You know, I always find with these new concepts it takes time just to kind of accept that they're there and that they are the way they are, and then we slowly get into them and we understand them and we start using them and working with them. In the beginning, reading them is just not fun, but eventually you get better and better at reading them and understanding them and working with them. So stay patient with yourself, hang in there. Until then, happy practicing and see you next time.